Good morning, good afternoon, colleagues. Pleasure to see you all. Uh, it is a particular privilege and pleasure to be beamed into the EU pavilion and welcome you all uh, to the event as EU and its member states have a very ambitious climate agenda. This session is organized by Switch Asia in a collaboration with Switch to Green and Switch Met. There are five switch programs supported by the European Union, Switch Asia, Switch Met, Switch Africa, and Switch to Circular, and of course, already mentioned Switch to Green, all working together uh, on innovation in the area of sustainable consumption and production on the ground and in the policy domain to bring our economies to being circular and inclusive. Switch Asia, the program I represent, seeks to contribute to connecting circularity and climate change mitigation and adaptation in the agri-food sector, thereby exploring pathways for circular, low-carbon economies. The sector is justifi justifiably a focus of today's discussion, as it is responsible for nearly 30% of the global greenhouse gas emissions. When working with this transformation in agri-food sector, we are guided among other regional policies, by EU Green Deal, Circular Economy Action Plan, Farm to Fork Strategy, and the 2030 EU Biodiversity Strategy. Today, we have a privilege of having with us representatives of most critical stakeholders of SWITCH, European Commission, grants, uh, or the projects which are really innovating and implementing on the ground, and the government, in dialogue with which we pursue climate resilient development. On behalf of my team that is with us virtually, I'm happy to welcome you all in this room and online to this exciting, deep and transformative discussion. And to start with, let me uh, show you a video which presents Switch vision and mission. Did you ever wonder how natural resources are used in your everyday life? The way societies use and care for natural resources has a fundamental impact on the well-being of the environment, the economy and humanity. At our current rate of consumption, we will need the resources of two Earths by 2030 to respond to our growing demand. Asia has already become the biggest consumer of natural resources. By 2030, the region is expected to have the world's largest group of consumers, with spending predicted to reach 28 trillion euros. However, this growth remains largely founded on unsustainable consumption and production patterns. If we don't seriously change our consumption behavior and make our production more efficient, we are going to degrade our environment to a point of no return. Sustainable consumption and production is about doing more and better with less. It is about boosting economic growth without deteriorating the environment, increasing resource efficiency, and promoting sustainable lifestyles, minimizing our wastes, creating effective environmental protection policies, supporting the development of responsible and ethical businesses, and educating the public are ways we can help improve our consumption and production. With an investment of nearly 300 million euros, Switch Asia is the largest SCP program supported by the EU in Asia and Central Asia. Launched in 2007, it has implemented around 130 projects and benefited about 80,000 Asian micro, small and medium enterprises across sectors. Agri-food, textiles and leather, housing, buildings and construction, waste and plastics. Which Asia is aligned to main EU strategies created to respond to the global challenges our environment is facing today. The European Green Deal, the Circular Economy Action Plan, the Farm to Fork Strategy, the EU Industrial Strategy, the Plastic Strategy. Each 
Each one of us can make a difference. It is our shared responsibility. Will you choose to spend less, save more, and live better? And the person who will take us through this journey today is Arab Habala, who heads SEED, organization that empowers entrepreneurs towards sustainability actions and who in his past has been a director at UNEP and those at the center of development of the global SCP agenda. Arab, please guide us. Thank you very much, Zineda. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining us this afternoon. Let me remind the title that is gathering us today. Receipts for Change, How a Sustainable Food System Can Curb Carbon Emissions. In my brief introduction, I will focus on these key words and share with you some elements of thought, food for thought. As stated in the concept note that was shared, the agri-food sector accounts for about 30% of global emissions, with current food systems consuming large amount of natural resources and contributing to biodiversity loss. Without significant shifts in consumer behavior and food production, it is unlikely to achieve targets and the Paris Agreement and deliver on the SDGs. Let me get back to the element of the title and its keywords and the ones underlying it. Receipt for change, recipe for change. Not just guidebooks for cooking, but alternative approaches, policies and actions, practically practical and tested, elaborated with concerned stakeholders so as to, be, to have a chance to be implemented and to deliver the badly needed transformative change. To that end, it is necessary to identify and associate concerned stakeholders, policymakers, private and business, small and medium enterprises, local communities and civil society, engaging them through multi-stakeholder consultation. We also need to understand the system of the food sector from production to consumption, including processing, use, and disposal and waste. And important to understand the interrelations and interactions of the food system in the overall economic, social, and environmental ecosystem. For that, the most appropriate tools and frameworks are definitely defined as today the circular economy and sustainable consumption and production tools which should encompass awareness raising, we are here for that, building enabling conditions, hopefully you will all contribute to that, ensuring access to practical information and knowledge, building synergies and cooperation, we are here all for that, and consolidating resilience. This is an important element in the agri-food sector. The resilience of the food system is currently under growing threat from soil degradation, pollinate, pollinator losses, food scarcity, water scarcity, excessive land for meat production, 75%, extreme weather events, and last but not least, our current and continuing unsustainable consumption and production patterns. This was the theme of the video. So it's critical that we look at the opportunities for change. There are a lot of problems. But opportunities for change to become more responsible and to get process right do exist. It's not just talks. We can transform the existing food system into regenerative food systems. We can push the business to deliver on business value by making the supply chain and the business models more resilient, more beneficial for the society and for the economy, and to ensure a just transition by reducing the waste, loss, waste, waste food and, lo and uh, production losses. 
for this, and that's why I gathered here, the EU has been leading by example in that. It's not just because we're here. I have been always using it in my work in the UN. EU, EU commitment to sustainability and environmental protection is really driving, and hopefully it will be heard in order to be able to effectively deliver the change. And to give us more about what the EU is doing, I'm calling on Mrs. Carla Montesi, the Director of uh, INPA, International Partnership of the EU, Head of Green Deal Digital Agenda. Mrs. Montesi, please come in. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, really welcome our dear panelists here and, uh, and online. I'm very, very happy to, to share this moment all together here in the COP. It's a huge conversation we have a looking, huge conversation on our big climate challenges and the impact on agriculture. So many, many things were already said in the brief introduction and by Harab, but I just want to take the opportunity once again to underline three main elements. One is agriculture. Agri-food sector, it's clear, it's the engine of our economies. But we know very well how fragile it is. We have seen during the last crisis, the COVID crisis, but also the Russia aggression in Ukraine, what the impact has had on food security around the world. And we know also that climate, the climate shock are among the primary drivers of rising food insecurity. We know at the same time, as Arab just said, that uh, the agriculture is the sector that uh, is the largest greenhouse emitters. 30% of the global emissions are coming from the agricultural sector. So it's clear we have all to work through putting in place food system, but we know also from now that food systems are complex and that carbon emission is not an easy task. Its uh, emissions are produced at all the, the, the full point of the chain from the production, the processing, the storage, the transport, and also from the cooking. And the current food system also we know, consume, not only in Asia, but around the world, the large amount of natural resources, contribute to biodiversity loss and also has a negative health impact. So it's clear, it was said we need a shift. We need a shift in the global trends. We need a shift in our consumer behavior, in our food system and production. Arab and the video already mentioned, European Union is very committed to working towards this shift. We have a strategy. Our strategy is the Green Deal. It's about reaching climate neutrality by 2015. We have already from now a strong legal commitment in Europe about cutting emission, greenhouse emission by 55% by 2030. And we have put in place a strategy that is a global strategy. It's um, a, a, a nexus between all the different sectors, working uh, on circular economy, working on the agricultural sector, working on biodiversity, working with industry on the growth, working in energy. So it's a, a multi-sector strategy that will uh, allow us to arrive to climate neutrality by 2015. Of course, on all this, it's a strong engagement in Europe, but we know very well that Europe, it's, uh, it's uh, count very little in the global gas emission, just about 90%. So it's clear that we want to work with all our partners around the world in curbing this gas emission. And this is the reason why also in our international partnership instrument, in the financial instrument, we have committed ourselves to dedicate 30% of all the global resources to finance green action, climate action. This with all the partners that want to engage with us in this path towards green transition. So 
Switch program that we are presenting today is one of the multiple programs that we are financing with our financial instrument. But I have to say it's a very important program. As was said from the beginning, we started with Switch Asia, moving to Switch Med, moving now to Switch Africa, and also in the future, Switch Middle East and the, and the Pacific. If I look to Switch Asia, I can say that uh, uh, since 27, we have invested more than 300 million in projects around 24 countries. It's very, very important. We have a different action, but 25% of our projects in Switch are tackling a transition to food system. What we know that the ambition is very big. We want to continue to work towards Switch. Uh, we are launching, we have launched already last year, uh, Switch to Circle Economy Value Chain Initiative. We have a Switch to Green Initiative that remain our largest EU flagship initiative, promoting circularity and sustainability. And uh, we are working also with the switch in Latin America towards Euro Clima program. What is clear for us that uh, working this domain, we require a collective effort. When I say the collective effort imply effort from the public authorities, but also from the private sector, from the researcher, from the producer, from the invest investors, so all together we can succeed in leading this, this shift change. And I'm very happy that we are here today to listen to your experience, to your project, because I think that with this collective exchange of experience that we can identify here in the COP the best practice to succeed all together facing the global challenges that we have. I stop here and very happy to have this occasion to hear of all your experience. Many thanks. Thank you very much, Mrs. Montesi. Let me uh, open and close quickly a parenthesis. Switch, when it was launched, it was switching to SCP. So the basics was switching to sustainable consumption and production. And when I was leading it in the UN system, my main reference has always been what the EU has been doing. Not because you are here, we would have never delivered in the UN system the agenda, the 10-year framework of program on sustainable consumption and production and the other national SCP strategies if we did not have SCP up front in the beginning, but then we told them stay on the back so that the, the world can own it. And that's what happened. So it's really important to know that and I hope it will follow the same with, with the Green Deal. Now let me tell you how we, we are going to manage this, this session or the remaining time that we have here. First, we will be talking or listening from colleagues about projects implemented and the SWITCH program. SWITCH Asia and SWITCH Mediterranean are represented here. Then we will hear about policies, policies that were implemented under the, the program of SWITCH and how the STP policies can effectively support the, the change in the government. And at the end, we will get back a little bit to what Mrs. Montesi was saying, looking at the EU policies, uh, how these are really driving, not only within the EU, but elsewhere as a reference. So without, with, uh, without any delay, uh, we have here with us three uh, panelists representing really three different entities. Mrs. A Mr. Azamat Mukachev, advisor of Minister, Minister, Minister of Agriculture of Kyrgyz Republic, Mrs. Tang Guyen, Director of Vietnam Rural Industry Research and Development Institute, and Mr. Karim Al-Waqad, Al-Waqad, Afwan Wahad al Arabiya, a project manager, second development project. We start with the projects. Looking at how the switch project have really contributed to the development of innovations on the ground. This is what is important for us. So I will invite first Mr. Ta and then Karim. 
briefly, you will have uh, uh, various options to intervene. Can you explain the main innovations of your project from an SCP perspective? So we're looking at consumption and production and the process, focusing where relevant on the questions of resource efficiency, resource substitution, circularity, and as much as possible, what has been your drivers, the challenges you face, the opportunities this would create? And then how Switch A to program helps you? Ms. Stapp, can you go, come in and introduce yourself briefly? Thank you very much. So my name is Thoa. I'm the director of Viri. It's a local NGO in Vietnam, and I've been working here for 25 years. So um, we are very lucky to be a uh, lead of some EU granted projects, and this time is an eco fair project. We focus on the promotion of um, uh, supply and demand for the agri-food processing in Vietnam. And um, relating your question, it's a very long question. Huh? So <clears throat> what is the main uh, innovation for uh, our project implementation? Uh, so actually, uh, the EcoFair project we started at the peak time of the uh, of the COVID-19 epidemic. So uh, there's uh, a, a lot of uh, difficulties, challenges. Uh, but anyhow, um, <clears throat> since our approach uh, and our design approach uh, mainly um, to do the capacity building for the companies online through Fuji platform, so it also uh, has a lot of. Um, um, improvement and uh, no, no, not much effect from the, the COVID-19. So our main innovation, um, uh, innovation is the ecosystem approach. We focus both on the uh, demand side and the supply side, and we get the you know, very. We are very lucky to get the support of all the stakeholders in Vietnam, uh, that including the government, um, uh, national uh, associations, business business support organization, uh, finance. finance financial institution and especially the SMEs that are ready to uh, shift to a more SCP. And uh, <laughs> challenges already said because of the COVID-19 and the economy slowed down, but it's also the time that we need, uh, we see that we need to do much more uh, for our healthy uh, planets and, um, uh, and business. Uh, anyhow, this is also a big opportunities because we can see that a lot of buyers um, requirements on the on the more environmental friendly products, and there's a market pool of requirements for uh, for these products. <coughs> so, yeah. Can I just ask you a follow up question immediately on that? Okay. How this is related to the climate change? and the carbon emission, how much the work you are doing mm -hmm. is effectively contributing to reducing emissions, since the gathering is about that. Yes, so um, uh, actually the, the capacity building is very important when we uh, uh, do it online for more than 1,000 companies in Vietnam. That, that's the first thing. And the second thing that we, uh, we support the companies on the um, uh, training and um, uh, assessment on the resource efficiency and cleaner production with our partners, uh, VNCPC. And also we, uh, we work with the uh, product innovation and technology innovation with our partner CCS. Uh, <coughs> And now for the um, consumer, consumer side, um, uh, we do a lot of um, um, advocacy uh, activities in Vietnam, both online and offline. But uh, very important is the training, uh, training activities with the um, uh, Funzi platform for uh, more than half a million uh, consumers in Vietnam to shift more to more sustainable behaviors. And that lead to the more demand on the eco fair products. So all this, we, we strongly believe that all the activities and um, output outcome of the project will contribute to the um, low, carb low carbon, um, uh, resource efficient, uh, and also the circular economy in Vietnam. Thank you very much. Karim, can you comment on both, please? Yeah, thank you uh, very much. Uh, um, uh, my name is Karim Mukhtar. I'm a project manager in Sikkim Development Foundation in Egypt. Um, actually, we, in Sikkim, we are focusing uh, really on uh, organic farming. Uh, we started organic farming in 1977 when no one in Egypt or Africa knows what the meaning of organic farming. And this was the first challenge that we faced that uh, we need to raise awareness about organic farming and what, what's the benefits from organic farming. Uh, and then we shifted uh, our strategy to uh, incentivizing uh, the farmers in our community 
uh, by carbon credits. So um, now we are working closely with 2,000 uh, farmers uh, in Egypt and we are upscaling to 40,000 uh, by 2025. Um, um, we require the farmers uh, three requirements. First of all, they need to be uh, organic farming without any pesticides or any chemicals. Second thing, they need to find a clean way, uh, a clean energy way uh, in like watering and harvesting the crop in the land. And third thing, to uh, plant more trees beside the crops in, our, in their land. And uh, by this strategy, uh, they can uh, carbon uh, sequestration uh, and uh, mitigate the climate change and also increase their income, income by uh, the credit, uh, the carbon credit. Uh, so this is a plan and this is a strategy of working closely with uh, more than 2,000 farmers for the time being. And uh, we think that this uh, it benefits the whole environment by uh, carbon sequestration and climate change and as well as healthy and organic products for the consumers. Because we believe that in, in Sikkim, we believe we we are 7 billion people on this planet. Uh, our needs are growing, but the planet cannot grow anymore. So uh, therefore we need to change our way of doing business, producing and consuming at the same time. And uh, yeah, as I said, the biggest challenge that we are facing is uh, convincing farmers, and I'm, I'm sorry to say that, but not well-educated farmers to change the uh, farming strategy or technique from the traditional way into the organic way. It's, it's really tough to do that. So uh, I think with the, with the help of the European Union uh, projects, with the Swatch projects, with everything, with all our partners internationally and nationally, uh, we are working on that. So um, hopefully we're doing a great job so far. To what extent your collaboration with Switch help you really to scale up to to bring more farms. Yeah, uh, switch, uh, switch not all, only helping us in this sector, it's also helping us in the entrepreneurship sector, which we uh, look for green entrepreneurs working in the agri-food uh, sector as well. And we have been supporting in the last three years, uh, we have been supporting more than 80 uh, startups, green startups, entrepreneurs in the agri-food uh, sector. Uh, so I think the switch program, it, it unlocks the potential and give us the support and the needs that we need to give also to our farmers and to our uh, community from entrepreneurs as well. Let us expand from what you are doing and your farmers. Look at the supply chain. How much of the other industries are inspired by what you do? You look at the beginning, you have difficulties convincing, you have been advocating. How much have you been leading by example for others? As I told you at the beginning, we started uh, organic farming in 1977, so that's regarding uh, organic agriculture. Um, and now we started the first sustainable development uh, university in Africa and Middle East. It's called Heliopolis University for Sustainable Development, uh, which we're trying to teach the, the youth and uh, the young Egyptians from the beginning, how, what is sustainable development? How can you be more creative? How you can be an entrepreneur in the future? So also we have a, uh, some educational uh, touch in this matter. Uh, also we do have uh, some uh, organic product uh, manufacturers as uh, food products and uh, drink products as well, water products. So we're trying to influence with the sustainable development and our vision in all our different kind of sectors as well. And uh, in our entrepreneurship hub that we have in our uh, in Sikkim, we are working not only with agriculture, we're working with ICT, handicrafts, um, and also textile. And they are all green startups. And we're trying to incubate them, support them. Uh, sometimes we support them financially and technically from some uh, EU-funded projects and also from the switch programs. So we're just combining all of that to achieve at the end one goal. Thank you very much. That, uh, let me come back to Tao. Uh, Sekem has the, uh, mm, they, have, they have a long history, as he said. How much the project that you have been implementing, which is the first step, can effectively be scaled up? How do you see the opportunities for scaling up what you have been doing? Yes, oh, we see um, there's a lot of opportunity for scaling up because uh, our, after almost three years of implementing, our project started in uh, April 2020. We have uh, some kind of some remarkable results with a showcase, a very practical and viable showcase of, uh, from the MSMEs uh, on the how to save waste, uh, save cost, um, and uh, also to make security uh, works for the MSMEs, even for the small household. So the first is the um, examples. And the second thing that um, our project also highlights some uh, secular economy and other policy approach that can accelerate 
the transition of agri-food uh, value chain to a low carbon um, industries in Vietnam. And also the, the engage of you know, youth and general public by promoting low carbon um, nutrition and lifestyle. So all that uh, make the, um, the, the support of the stakeholders and uh, they are commit like uh, from the national association, from the government, and especially from the, the, um, the MSMEs and the BSO, uh, they wish to continue and to expand that, that in, um, in the future. Same question as for Karim, how much your work, because you referred to the National Kina Production Center, and I believe the network that has around it, how much have you been able to influence others, to induce others that will learn from you and copy you? Uh, for both of you. Go first. Okay, <laughs> I, I'm afraid I'm talking too much. Um, so. Uh, I think that um, uh, inspired by examples is the most inspiration because uh, that the company will uh, share the story by themselves. They do the advocacy for the for the SCP switch Asia program by themselves, and uh, and then um, uh, I think that the policy is very important for uh, for this expansion. Uh, in Vietnam, we have the uh, green growth uh, strategy by the government and uh, also green growth plan of the each ministries and each sector. So I think that that's the two key points for the uh, multiplication. Uh, of course, uh, if I compare the uh, production and uh, consumption, then I, I think that the sustainable cons consumption need more intervention. Yeah. Thank you. Karim, you can add a little bit. Yeah, from my side, I believe that influencing about the sustainable development and climate change, it's like a train. And I believe that the first uh, part of that train is the EU and the EU policies that we all follow. So we directly follow the EU with the policies and the strategies about sustainable development and climate change. And also we're trying from our side to influence some uh, government, uh, international and national um, institution, our partners basically. And for the time being, we are working closely with the government in Egypt about the carbon credit uh, market that you can open. And it was just 30 minutes ago, the prime minister was talking about it. So um, we were the first, if not the first, but we were from the first uh, organization that uh, requested to have a carbon uh, market in Egypt. So um, yeah, I think we, we have a big influence and in also different sectors uh, working with entrepreneurs, with the students. So yeah, it's a big influence we're doing. Thank you very much. Let us move to, to the policy side, but please both of you keep in mind, because I'll ask you a question, what would you expect from national policies to support your work? Uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Azamat uh, Makashev, uh, how in the context of Kyrgyzstan? Каким образом в контексте Кыргызстана ваша политика, которая бы способствовала метрам смягчения, адаптации в, сельско в агропромышленном секторе, вы можете сказать об инновации, финансовых инструментах, обучении, всем, чем, то, что вы реализовали у себя. И каков... И как... He will speak to in Russian for the people who uh, need to listen to intervention. Please, Mr. Azman. Many thanks, dear Mr. Arab. Can you hear me now? Um, uh, yes, we have done a, a, a lot on the framework of our constitutional reform. Our ministry has been following a number of uh, directions that are of great importance of the uh, life of people of our republic, grazing, livestock farming, the forestry, uh, and uh, the uh, organic farming, organic agriculture in general. In Kyrgyzstan, we have developed the program of green economy, and the green agriculture is a part of this program. And uh, um, under this framework, and given the res limited resources of our republic, I should point out that uh, Central Asia, in Kyrgyzstan, out of all the uh, all, all the countries of Central Asia, has its own um, water resources potential. 
and yet our water resources capacities are limited. 25% of water are being lost when transported to the consumer. And the agri-food sector consumes 60% of all the water resources generated in the Republic. And the Ministry of Agriculture, of course, was tasked to manage in the best way possible with the scarce resources so that we could get the ultimate result. The COVID-19 has shown shown us the uh, limitations of some countries in terms of uh, um, uh, food security. And we have adopted as a a follow-up to that a a, a concept of cluster policies aimed at the food security for nine main food products for the stables. And the framework of this concept, the Switch Asia, was a particular interest to us in order for us to go ahead uh, of your proposals, not only to... uh, in terms of food security, but also reducing waste and side uh, products that also interfere in the uh, consumption, sustainable consumption and production. Uh, Switch Asia has been of great support to us in this respect. Uh, Jay said uh, another program we have been actively engaged with, where we explored the, the capacity of uh, 9 million grazing lands for us in terms of mitigation, put the capacity of grazing in the forestry, 9 million hectares. Right now we are looking at the possibility of the satellite support of a, of a agriculture. So developing the uh, satellite capacity of agricultural uh, uh, progress in the, to the maximum extent. Thank you. Thank you very much. The satellite that can give you the right data in order to be follow up. Uh, uh, on, the, on the cluster policy that you were referring to that help you really to to care more about food security, about reducing waste, promoting SCP. How much this in your policy is defined as a contribution to climate mitigation, to reducing CO2 emission? Is there a space there specifically related to climate change in the agri-food sector? Well, uh, for example, what uh, for, the exam- for the example that has been given by the other colleagues, the development of organic production, we have adopted the law on organic production. 4,000 hectares are occupied by the uh, organic production. No, 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 no. We've uh, already introduced the certification by the European Union for our produce as organic produce. The cluster development provides for developing the infrastructure, financial flows, research innovations, all aimed at mitigation and adaptation, as well as political will with the local community. And, And the most important thing is security, is that in if earlier we have been uh, tracing the uh, security, well, the safety of our uh, food product, he's talking actually about the safety. Now the main uh, uh, developments are done in the in terms of the safety of food products. And when we develop the cluster areas, the farmers in these clusters get the subsidies and benefits if they guarantee the food, the safety of the food products. The, the second point that we have been ra- raising is the, uh, the their contribution in the disposal of waste. If we are talking about the Livestock farming, and of, of course, you know, the, the, the waste is a major issue in this particular area of agriculture. Uh, if we uh, uh, talk another, if, uh, about other types of breeding, actually, the, uh, the waste is a, a major problem and the, um, improving the soils. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. It's important to know this issue of safety and security, maybe mainly in our current world of crisis. Uh, can I ask uh, Zineida, uh, can you please tell us how the technical assistance of Switch Asia 
helps with understanding of the areas with policy support, how it's necessary, or how the technical assistance of Switch Asia help with identification of the policy tools, uh, as you have heard uh, from Mr. Azamat and from our colleagues on the project level. Can you tell us more about the specificity and the nature of the support from Switch Asia? What a set of inspirational stories, colleagues, isn't it? So uh, one has shivers uh, in the spine listening to you. Um, what you saw uh, before I appear on a large screen uh, is really the schematics which, which explains the philosophy and strategy behind Switch Asia and which, uh, which philosophy answers uh, are of your question. What is, the, what is the relation between Switch and policies? And how does it have relations to what is relevant and appropriate for the activities in each individual country or on the level of whole, whole region? So uh, let me again emphasize that EU and its Switch Asia program has recognized the critical importance of agriculture, food sector, and the role of SCP in this. And what program does in promoting SCP in the sector uh, is through the technical assistance provided by Switch Asia SCP facility at the government level. This is a policy element. And through the grant programs in support of the region's SCP uh, relevant um, um, small and medium-sized enterprises as well as individual entrepreneurs and consumers. So, in other words, we have the activities on the ground which innovate and we have a policy arm which helps to upscale this kind of activity. So, uh, how it's being done? Uh, first of all, of course, we do have a, uh, a number of experts which are working on the demand from the countries on uh, development of the uh, policies, building these policies on dialogue between our experts and government, but being very strongly informed by the grant projects. So what also is quite important in this regard is, of course, the building of understanding uh, what SCP is and lately what circular economy is. So in a sense, we are working with demystifying the strategies and approaches behind the circular economy, again, relying on the practices of uh, SCP as a major driver for that. So we are communicating success stories such as uh, uh, Toya, Azamat are being uh, uh, sh sharing, but at the same time, I'll repeat myself, taking insight from the stories, stories to develop the policies in dialogue with government. Out of 143 grant projects supported by EU through Switch Asia program, over 30 which Asia grant projects work in agri-food sector across the region. Currently, activities are going in Laopedia, in Vietnam, in China, in Mongolia, in India, in Uzbekistan, in Tajikistan. They work with primary production and secondary, secondary processing uh, in different sectors, such as coffee, cacao, poultry, bamboo, um, working with organic food farming in the area of food and beverage, so it is secondary processes, uh, processing in connection to the market, and the supporting cold chains logistics, of course. And policy support in the agri-food is also closely related uh, uh, to these activities, and they were currently uh, conduct conducted in Kyrgyzstan, Kazakhstan, uh, Tajikistan, Vietnam, of course, uh, as well as um, going on for the whole Pan-Asia region. So, and what is important, uh, allow me to emphasize it, that, that innovations piloted by grants include all uh, elements of circular economy, resource circularity, uh, resource efficiency, resource switch, how we call it. Uh, in other words, switch to organic or less harmful product. Uh, and this is, of course, uh, done through development of profitable business models, technical solutions, innovative programs, uh, uh, products, sorry, uh, return and reuse uh, schemes and green procurement uh, platforms. And all of that is connected to the policy work which we do in the, uh, with the government. Back to you, Arab. Thank you very much. A huge program. This is which policies, small and medium enterprises, consumers, production, consumption. We're just swimming in the middle, but hopefully we can find a way. I have an interesting question for the four of you that's coming from, uh, uh, from one of the attendees. 
and we'll start with Karim, okay? To what extent the government work with SMEs, even if you are a private company, you can tell us what do you think from Egypt, to what extent the government work with SMEs, and are there strategies to influence and support the work of the SMEs? So from Egypt, Thailand, Kyrgyzstan, and the EU. Vietnam. Vietnam. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Yeah, um, I believe uh, regarding the government uh, work, uh, regarding the SMEs, uh, they are trying to be more open-minded with the SMEs and with entrepreneurs and with startups. They are taking some models from the US and from Europe as well. Uh, they are trying to create new policies to uh, adapt uh, the need of the market and the need uh, um, of the people as well. Um, and I think, I think the strategy is going well. But I think it's need to be faster than that. We, um, we shouldn't be like uh, in the tail of the train. We need to be in the middle or maybe in the front. So um, I believe it's a good strategy. I believe it's working fine. But uh, we, our only concern is need to be faster. Uh, because as it's written over there, it's, it, we need to act now regarding everything. And um, when we talk, if I get back to the point of climate change and sustainable development, uh, yeah, we should, we should like act now. You can see the, the influence and the uh, circumstances of the climate change. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm sorry, but I need to give this example. I, I, at the time being, I live in Europe, in Austria. Last week, it was sunny in Austria. We have never seen sun in Austria in November. So basically, you can see the climate change. It's nothing that you can only read about. You can see it everywhere. So uh, I believe that we need to act now, act fast. Uh, by acting, it's not a button that we will press. By acting, it means more work that we need to be done, more networking, more partnerships, uh, agreements. And yeah, let's do it. Thank you. Thank you Sorry. for remembering me from Vietnam. <laughs> <laughs> so actually, the, the government of Vietnam, uh, we already have um, uh, many um, good, uh, good policy for the SMEs, especially for the MSMEs, micro, medium enterprise. Um, uh, but I think that if um, uh, we, we really wish to have a kind of uh, system for the carbon credit um, uh, to, to give a, a reward for those who already uh, did good, things and uh, they can uh, have uh, some kind of reward uh, from uh, what they have been done. So a kind of like a um, carbon credit um, uh, platforms in Vietnam, something like that. Yeah. Good system of reward for carbon credit with the SMEs. Yeah. Interesting. We should share it with the others. <laughs> from Kyrgyzstan, please. Ras, ras. I will uh, split, break down what has been said by Kirim in two parts. We absolutely need a platform, an interface between small and medium business and uh, the state because we need to see the conditions, the terms that the state sets for our business. In Kyrgyzstan, in the agricultural sector, we have set up a cluster development council where nine cluster development representatives are sitting and discussing their, uh, their pertinent questions. And all the, all the parts of the value-added chain are being discussed. We are talking, for instance, about the husbandry, about the reprocessing, about the market. They break down the, uh, the value creation chain, adding there our research and our financial flows. And this is something that allows us to see what are the problems that can alleviate the state, that can be, be relieved from the state, and what are those that can be addressed by the state. This uh, platform has never existed before for 30 previous years, and we are trying to develop and make use of it to the maximum. The most important part is to get a response from our businesses. All the initiatives, uh, well, all the projects that have been put forward by the government, they are aimed at developing businesses. But, of course, we put some conditions, the energy saving, uh, the nature saving, the greening technologies, and, uh, such as the drip irrigation, etc. So, well, with one hand, we are giving out, with another hand, we are taking away, so when the, or establishing a balance. And this is our uh, contribution to the environmental security. Thank you.
three from different countries. Interesting to see how we can combine them. The EU. Yeah, the word on EU. <laughs> so starting maybe from the beginning, we started saying we needed to look to agriculture, how we can curb gas emission in agriculture, putting in place the food system. We have mentioned during our debate that it's very, very important to work with all the actors. And when we mention the actors, of course, there is also the private sector, the industry, the small and medium enterprise. So when we look to food system, we know that we are a complex. We need to move from healthy diet to a sustainable production to a sustainable consumption. In all these steps, the role of the private sector is essential. So as a level of European Union, we are working into dialogue with the private sector involve the private sector, has his in the COP. In the COP here, we are around many, many of our entrepreneurs that are here to listen, to involve them. And uh, as EU, what we are doing also to put in place some new financial instrument to stimulate to the risk, to promote investment that are looking to sustainable path, sustainable investment in the agricultural sector, looking to the small farmers as a priority and looking to small, medium enterprise that are working in the sustainable value chain for the different product. So clear private sector have a very important role to play. Yeah, I believe as we were saying before, the EU is leading by example and probably what you are doing here because I think it will be discussed in different places here because you said you are, de you are defining new financial instruments that are accessible to small farmers, to small, to small companies, which is precisely what is missing in this type of gathering. How can we have this funding accessible? And it will be interesting to understand under the Green Deal and the Farm to Fork strategy, how are you... I would say translating this in your collaboration with the other countries, with Asia, with Africa, is this, is this processing? Are you inducing the other regions to follow this approach? Yes, to, to I would say to promote, okay? We cannot say the Green Deal is for our partners. No, the Green Deal is commitment from Europe. But of course, as I was saying in the beginning, our intention is to promote that we move collectively through the same path around the world because it's only acting all together in the same sustainable path that we can succeed to, to face the global challenges that we are doing. So we will use our policy dialogue we will use all the instruments that we will have from the technical assistance, the capacity building we were talking to supporting the private sector. We will use all our financial instruments and our policy dialogue to work with collectively with our partners moving in the same direction. Thank you. We have two minutes to conclude, but I just still want to give you a few seconds for a last intervention. In your respective field, what would you wish to see in real transformative change? We talked about recipe for change in the agri-food sector. If you have a wish, what do you want to see change in the next 10 years in relation to climate change and agri-food sector? Quickly, please. Karim. Just a quick wish that... Uh tomorrow we can find all the farmers uh, farming in an organic way. Thank you. Wow. Ta. I wish that it can contribute to the effort of neutral or positive environmental impacts and a circular economy. Thank you. Mr. Azamat. In the next 10 years, we would like to see our farmers in a digital format. We know exactly what resources we have. We know what problems we have where we are being created so that we can в качестве превентивных мер это предотвращать. Это основа и залог продовольственной безопасности, а также работы по экологии. So we'd like to see our agriculture in digital format. Look, uh, we are concluding. I just want to take some key words here. We talked a lot about, a lot about consumer uh, advocacy, awareness raising, going to uh, green processes, learning by example, learn, uh, leading by example, learning by doing, telling the right stories in order to influence the others, being inspired by the EU, and this interesting approach of uh, cluster uh, uh, policies, but 
book focusing on safety, security, I will add resilience uh, in order to see how we can effectively manage that. Innovation is the driving force under the, uh, the EU, this EU switch program in general. The system of reward for carbon credit is something to be pushed, a platform to discuss uh, uh, with the stakeholders involving the small and medium enterprises and the essential role of the, small, uh, of the private sector. Carla, a few words to conclude. I think I will say very shortly, many, many thanks, because I can see that zero minutes are remain. So many, many thanks to our partners. The question that we were discussing today, it's a very, very important. It's a crucial one. I will say that the next COP that will be uh, focusing even much more on the agriculture input and impact on carbon uh, gas emission. So I think that we really count on the switch program that will be continued enlarged and uh, I think that our experience, our concrete experience have to lead us, have to be make public and have to lead us to provoke even more, more action in the same domain in the next future. And I hope that we will be here at the next COP with much more experience, much more best practice and the successful story. Many, many thanks to you all. Thank you all. Thank you very much. Thank you for your kindness.